everybody, thank you so much for clicking on this video. So today we're gonna talk about something that I see a lot, specifically on TikTok, and that is people saying that calorie deficits do not work for weight loss. So we're gonna go through a few videos that honestly are really just backed in personal experience, personal anecdotes, conspiracy theories, and I'm gonna dispel them by using science. And I do just wanna to touch on what a caloric deficit is, just in case you don't know what that means. So it's really simple, actually. A caloric deficit just means that you are taking in less energy than you are expending. And getting into a caloric deficit is different for everybody. It looks different, the number is going to be different. So thinking about it as this one-size-fits-all approach, is the wrong way to go. And I want you to remember that even though science is always adapting, and I like to think of science as this like living, breathing organism where we're always learning more, which is why I think it's so exciting, the basic concept of a caloric deficit is not going to change because it is literally the first rule of thermodynamics. And that rule is that energy cannot be created or destroyed. So meaning if you take in energy, your body has to do something with it. It can't just destroy the energy. So you're either gonna use it or store it as fat for later. Or the opposite, you can't just create energy in the body to do something. You actually have to use storage from your fat stores to produce that energy. Does that make sense? Okay, so now that that's all cleared up, let's look at the first video. Yes, I did. And I did think a long time ago before I spoke, and then I spoke, and the people listened, and now my Facebook group's lost over 8,500 pounds. So, and that's in three weeks. BT dubs. And no, that's not water weight. Mm -mm, not anymore. Back to this, you don't need to be in a calorie deficit to lose weight because they're pushing this so much because they make trillions of dollars keeping you fat and sick. Who's they pharmaceutical companies putting you on medicine and getting tons of your money from it. So heal yourself. And how you do that is changing your diet to an all meat diet. It's completely healing. It's actually what your ancestors used to do. They would go out, kill a bison, eat said bison, not eat for two days and do it again. What was their body doing? Ketosis. Yeah. Cut the carbs. It's poison. Fuel yourself burning your own body fat and live your life. Lose weight. I feel like she was going to end with like live, laugh, love. There's so much there. She also seems so mean. <laughs> okay. There's a lot there. We're going to we're gonna try to keep it to just the bit about a caloric deficit. First things first though, can we look for some certifications? Nope, none there. Let's go to her Instagram. Her certifications are carnivore Christian coach. Love the alliteration. So her only education is in personal experience and Google. Why would you pay someone money to do that? Why would you rely on somebody who literally could have just the exact same knowledge as you to coach you? It makes no sense to me. Okay, let's talk about what she's talking about. So once we wade through all of the weird carnivore diet shit, we get to the point where she says, you don't need to be in a caloric deficit to lose weight. We've already talked about why that doesn't make sense, right? Now she also says that you need to cut out carbs because they're poison and eat an all meat diet. Let's talk about the first part. Carbs are not bad for you. They are actually your body's main and preferred source of energy. Yes, you can eliminate carbs and then your body can use fat by turning them into ketones and using ketones as energy, but it's not preferred for your body. Now, if you go on an all meat diet, you might actually lose weight, but here's why. Carbs are going to be more calorically dense than a lot of your other food groups, meaning that they are gonna have more calories per volume of the food. Now, if you're eating all meat, which is gonna be pretty much all protein, and then depending on the cut of the meat, you're gonna have fat as well. Protein is going to be less calorically dense, typically, for more volume. So the reason you're losing weight is because you're in a caloric deficit. You're just not doing it in a way that is marked Marketed and branded to you. You're doing it in a way where you're cutting out an entire food group, which is your body's main and preferred source of energy. Guys, remember, being in a caloric deficit just means that you are taking in less energy than you're expending. It can look like a thousand different things, including a dumbass carnivore diet. Let's do another video. All right, I'm about to piss off a lot of fitness professionals because you'll see a lot of these type of people on TikTok, on Instagram, saying that the only way to be healthy and get shredded is to be in a caloric deficit. Well, here's the funny thing about that. I have never counted a calorie in my entire life. And I guarantee if you ask those same fitness professionals, 
what a calorie is, they wouldn't even be able to define it for you. And that is because they don't actually understand health. Health is not counting calories because oftentimes counting calories forces more stress and anxiety. You're always worried. Am I in a deficit? Am I not? And that same stress and anxiety causes inflammation on your body and on your nervous system. So understand you don't need to count calories to be healthy. That is just a lie that you've been fed. Peace out fam. I feel like he's talking in circles. It's like over here, over here, over here. It's like he's coked out or something. No one ever said that you needed to count calories to be healthy. I feel like we're talking about two different things. Calorie counting is a great tool, if you can tolerate it, that can help you reach whatever your goals are. But I do agree with the fact that some people can't count calories because it causes them a lot of stress and anxiety and might lead to disordered eating patterns. And for those people, there's a lot of other different ways that you can actually get into a deficit if that's part of your goal and lose weight. Nobody is saying that health means counting calories. I also don't really know why you think that fitness professionals don't know what a calorie is. A calorie is a, is a unit of energy. Like, do you know what it is? It's not that hard. But, you know, to take a black and white mindset of health equals calorie counting and then do the opposite and say health equals not calorie counting, that's not helping anybody. It's just a tool that might be useful for you to implement to get closer to your goal. But by giving these black and whites, like hard lines in the sand, that is not realistic. And that's not what life is. Guys, remember that life is all gray. It's all gray area. There are really no black and whites when it comes to your health for daily life. Do what works for you. You don't need to count calories. You can if you want. Calories in, calories out. It's a fucking scam. It's a distraction. You're not born with a calculator in your hand like, hmm, let me weigh my macros out. Hmm, let me calculate this. Get the fuck out of here. Your hypothalamus handles that, okay? Your food, your satiety mechanisms. If you're not poisoning your body, your satiety mechanisms, your satiety mechanisms will work a lot better. But if you're filling yourself with chemical garbage, all this stimulating sugar and your receptors are going nuts, but you're not getting cal caloric value, you're just fucking your system up. So what he's talking about here is food quality. And really what he's saying is that the quality of your food is going to affect your hormones rather than if you're just counting calories. And we're kind of talking about two different things here, right? He starts out by saying that calories in, calories out is a scam. And then he's going to talk in about food quality. It's two different things that we're talking about, right? Calories in, calories out is just the first law of thermodynamics. And if you're trying to lose weight, you need to be in a caloric deficit, period. End story. If we're talking about food quality, I agree, food quality matters, but that's a privileged thing to say. So many people do not have the funds or even the access to what this guy would say is actually quality food. He probably looks down at people whose only option is to shop at the dollar store because it's all they can afford. <sighs> Look, I would always recommend focusing first on just understanding how to get in some vegetables during your day, how to balance out a plate with carbs, fats, protein, and vegetables before we start diving into food quality. Like, master the basics, the foundations first. And then if you wanna start talking about quality cuts of meat, quality source proteins, then we can get into that. But master the basics first and just get onto a public platform and tell people that just them trying to master this basics, it's not enough because food quality is more important when so many people can't even master the basics or haven't mastered that yet. It's, it's fucking irresponsible. Like how privileged are you? And to be honest, this guy probably hasn't worked with a normal person in a really long time and doesn't understand the really basic struggles that people have when it just comes to getting quality food and then having the funds to afford it. If counting calories was really the key, then tell me this. Cattle today are fed one third less calories, but they're also fed industrial chemicals to make them fat. They actually measure the cow's hormones to see if the cow's getting fatter. Counting calories is a myth. This is what the food industry has sold us so you can keep counting calories and eating their processed junk. 100 calories of Doritos has a completely different effect on your hormones than 100 calories of broccoli. Was there a point? <laughs> This is getting a little bit closer to like the main argument I see a lot, which is how we're talking about hormones. He's basically saying that the foods that you eat, which are manipulated by the government, I'm not, definitely not like saying that he's wrong there. He's saying that those can affect your hormones 
in a negative way and then cause you to gain weight or not be able to get into a caloric deficit or whatever. I don't know what his really point was there. Um, I will say that dealing with hormonal issues, that's outside of my scope of practice, but I do understand the basic concept that your hormones absolutely can affect your, your metabolism or your metabolic rate. And there are really hyper palatable foods that are now marketed to us that can affect your hormones. So I don't disagree with him there, but literally saying that like caloric deficits are like, they're made up and invented by the government. Like what? These people where it's like, I, I, I do kind of see where you're trying to go, but like, do you? Because <laughs> you're not explaining it well at all. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. That is the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard. I have never heard someone say so many wrong things, one after the other, consecutively in a row. That is the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard. So this is this is the main thing I see a lot. These little like cutesy fun TikToks. They say that a caloric deficit does not work on people with hormonal issues. Eh, false, absolutely not true. If you have hormonal issues, maybe like let's say that you're someone with PCOS, it might be harder for you to get into a caloric deficit, but if you're in a caloric deficit, you, you will lose fat. So let me give you an example of what happens a lot. You go online, you go to your little TDEE calculator and you put in all of your stats, your age, your weight, your height, your gender, your activity level, and it spouts out these numbers. And you assume that these numbers are at least pretty accurate, right? So you go and you go and you click on the cut and you go, great, this is my cut numbers. And you stick to that cut, 90% consistency for three months and you don't lose any weight. So you go, calorie deficits don't work. Well, it actually just turns out you weren't in a deficit and it's not your fault. If you have hormonal issues, a lot of times that can actually affect your metabolism in a certain way. So when this calorie calculator has estimated based off of the numbers you put in, remember that it doesn't know you. So if your metabolic rate has been affected by anything, hormones, eating super low calorie for a long time, or in the opposite, if you have a lot of muscle on your body, so your metabolic rate is actually higher because muscle takes more energy to maintain at rest than fat does, those numbers that you just calculated aren't gonna be accurate. So again, it's not that the deficit didn't work, it's that you weren't in a deficit. The best thing you can do for yourself in, if you're in a situation like that is to work with a registered dietitian, preferably one, like it, we're using PCOS as the example, you preferably wanna work with somebody who does understand your exact hormonal condition. Get a metabolic scan done so it's gonna be way more accurate and it's gonna tell you exactly what your starting point is. And a lot of times if you do have a hormonal issue and you have trouble getting into a deficit and losing weight, your resting metabolic rate has probably dropped way down for whatever reason. So typically what an RD is going to do, they're going to help reverse diet you up so that your maintenance is at a little bit higher level. So then you can more easily get into a cut without literally starving yourself. Again, that is outside my scope of practice. Work with an RD for that, but that's the basic gist of it. So by people going onto TikTok and making these like seven second videos that don't tell you the full story, you're not helping anybody. You're just scared scaring people, and honestly, half these people have no certifications, and they're just trying to sell you some kind of supplement. Woo! All right, that was spicy. So hopefully you guys found that informative and enjoyable. I want you to remember two things when you come across messaging like this online. Number one, if someone is making something sound really, really complex, they're probably overcomplicating it for their own benefit. And number two, please check for certifications. <laughs> if you look online and you can't find them anywhere, they probably don't have them. It's a really good rule of thumb because you pay money and you work really hard for those certs and you want people to know that you have them. Whew. All right, any questions, leave them down below. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out and I will see you guys in the next one.